Hey, when was the last time you got good and angry? For me, there's no need whatsoever to re- rewind the clock very far back to recall my most recent uh, anger episode. Some days, I feel like an Earl Pitts episode. You remember Earl Pitts on 3WE down there in Cincinnati? Uh, he would always start off by saying, uh, you know what makes me sick? You know what makes me so angry? And then he fills in the blank. <laughs> so uh, do your anger episodes get ugly? Did you say? Do you say things uh, or do things that you now regret? Regret? Do you wish that you could rewind the clock and erase the words and the actions from uh, the ears of your spouse or your children or your neighbors or your co-workers? So today... Uh, I, w- I want to do something that may sound counterintuitive. I want to encourage your anger. You heard it. I want to encourage your anger. Now, that is, here's the caveat, that is only if your anger is going to be about something bigger than you. All right? You see, anger, just like all things in life, has to begin with God. First, we need to th- Excuse me. We need to uh, reevaluate how we think about the Lord and His anger. Mostly, we assume that anger is the dark side of God's character that we need to keep hidden from the world. Let me tell you, folks, our Heavenly Father does not have a dark side. John says this way in 1 John 1, 5. He says, uh, God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. So let me just bounce a bunch of texts off of you talking about God and his anger. In uh, Exodus is a good place to look. Exodus 32.10 says this. Now leave me alone, God says. Leave me alone so that uh, my anger may burn against them and that I may destroy them. Then I'll make you into a great nation or exodus 34 6 exodus 34 6 and 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 he passed in front of moses and and he said these things the lord the lord the compassionate and gracious god slow to anger abounding in love and faithfulness i like the text from deuteronomy 29 28 it says in furious anger And in great wrath, the Lord uprooted them from their land and thrust them into another land as it is now. You see, God is, uh, anger is a part of God's nature. Psalm 2 verse 12 says this, Kiss the son lest he be angry and, uh, and you be destroyed in your way for his wrath can flare up in a moment, blessed, happy, contented are those who take refuge in him. Psalm 35 says this, For his anger lasts only for a moment, but his favor may retain, uh, last a lifetime. Weeping may endure for a night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. And then if you read Romans 1.18, it says there, that the wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the godlessness and wickedness of men who suppress the truth by their wickedness. And there's bunches and bunches of more uh, texts that we can look at. Anger is one of God's most beautiful characteristics. In fact, his anger is a bright hope for the world because he is righteously angry. We We can rest assured that Everything sin has touched, everything sin has broken will be restored. That means we should be angry too. In a world in which nothing operates as it was intended and where evil often has more immediate influence than good, it would be wrong for us not to be angry. You simply cannot look at the world with the eyes of, uh, of truth And with a heart committed to what God says is right and good and not be good and angry at the state of things on occasion. You see, in a fallen world, 
Anger can be good. It can be constructive. Matter of fact, I think it can be essential. Um, so let me be re- let me be explicitly clear here. The Lord's anger is big kingdom anger, always working, always working to right what is wrong with patience, justice, mercy, and grace. You and I, on the other hand, we wrestle between big kingdom stuff, big kingdom anger, <laughs> that does sound funny, big kingdom anger and little kingdom anger. Because, you see, tur- sin turns us in on ourselves. We will be angry. We will be demanding. We will be critical for all the wrong reasons. So between the here and now, or the already, where we happen to find ourselves, between the already and the not yet, our anger uh, will, be at, will be at war with anger. This, this will be a war between God's will and our will, between God's plan and our plan, between God's desires and our desire, and between God's rule, his sovereignty, and our desire to rule ourselves. It's a war fought in every situation, in every location, even in every relationship in our life. So you should be angry. You should be angry at the things that make God angry. So you should make whatever would make God angry should make you good and angry and thereby spur us into righteous activity. But be wary, your heart will be prone towards anger for the wrong reasons. Will your anger propel you to be a healer, a restorer, a rescuer, a reconciler, or Will your anger leave a legacy of fear, hurt, disappointment, and division? God offers you the grace to be righteous and angry at the very same time.